These newspaper article readings are not for the faint-hearted or the squeamish. If you're at all sensitive, I might suggest these aren't for you. Um, if in doubt, check the description below. It'll tell you which topics are covered in this particular episode. Uh, there's both human and animal suicides, and you heard that right. Um, there's also horrific descriptions of injuries, uh, as well as the deaths of youngsters. Um, so don't do it to yourself if you're prone to nightmares, is all I'll say right now. Not all the articles are horrible. Some of them are uplifting, some of them show incredible bravery and heroism. Um, there are near misses. Uh, so these were picked as showing life prior to health and safety, uh, as well as for the crazy and curious details some contain with uh, other miscellaneous happenings um, that kind of struck me enough to uh, post the articles um, to Twitter, uh, despite not having too much relevance to Scotland necessarily. Um, these are worldwide topics. Uh, and. They didn't have any real connection to the projects I was working on and researching at the time. I just happened to have come across them, by the way, kind of thing. So uh, we'll get into them, shall we? What we're going to do here is we're going to do a lucky dip of newspaper articles to really mix them up a wee bit, because while I'm doing the research is I'm obviously coming up with the same kind of terms and things. So, uh, we'll mix them up even further. So to that end, I have all of the newspaper titles and dates of the articles. Okay, what does it have, have in store for us today? I don't know. Let's find an article. We will start with... The Montrose are both in Brecon Review and Forfer in Kincardenshire Advertiser for the 4th of July 1902. If we were hoping for a positive start, we didn't get it. Uh, we have Graveyard Horror in Glasgow. Five men were on Friday remitted from the Glasgow Southern Police Court in connection with an extraordinary affair brought to light the previous night at Southern Necropolis. Shortly before midnight, two boys saw two men carrying a heavy box at Brayhead Street. The men were followed, and on their noticing this, they left the box at a lonely part of the necropolis. The boys went forward and made an examination, and on opening the box found it contained the bodies of five children. They at once went to inform a police constable who was in the vicinity, but on their return, they found to their surprise that four of the bodies had been removed and buried, a search revealing the other body at a different point. Information was conveyed to the Southern Police Office and the bodies, when recovered, were taken to the mortuary. The bodies were subsequently examined by Dr. Chalmers, a casualty surgeon, who stated that they appeared to be those of stillborn children. Some of them were badly decomposed. Two grave diggers were arrested in connection with the matter and three other men are also in custody. And that's from the Montrose or both in Brecon Review and Forfer and Concordanshire Advertiser for the 4th of July 1902. What that suggests to me is that there was maybe some kind of abortion practice going on in the vicinity um, for them to have had five infants' bodies. Um, it, I think it would be unlikely that they all came from the same person. Um, and I don't think they were out there murdering children. There isn't an outcry about children being kidnapped or any suggestion of, of that. Um, I think that's maybe the result of abortion practices um, for desperate women back at the start of the 20th century uh, that's led to to this scenario and um, that's all I can think of uh, to explain that 
so we'll have another one. Something a bit more positive. Um, the Edinburgh Evening News for the 6th of June, 1905. Let's see what the Edinburgh Evening News has for us. Okay, uh, so maybe not positive, but no one dies in this article. So um, we have a scaffolding accident in an Annan church. Mr John McCulloch, painter and decorator Annan, who is well known throughout the south of Scotland, met with a serious accident this morning. He was superintending painting operations in St John's Episcopal Church in Annan when the scaffold on which he was standing broke. Mr McCulloch and one of his workmen, James Bell, fell to the floor, a distance of 25 feet. Mr McCulloch fell on his head, which was badly cut, the extent of his injuries not yet being definitely known. The man Bell and his descent fell on one of the seats in the church and smashed it. He was much cut about the face, and his chest was bruised. When the accident occurred, Mr McCulloch was speaking to the man, and the scaffold gave way without any warning whatever, allowing them no chance to save themselves. And that's from the Edinburgh Evening News for the 6th of June, 1905. He's fell 25 feet on his head, and only received a bad cut on his head? But he didn't fracture anything, or break his neck is crazy lucky. Yeah. Yeah, either of those men could have died. Falling on the chair, I mean, he could have been impaled. So, I would say those guys are lucky and got out of that one. Um, so, more positive. More positive. Maybe not an accident. Maybe a near miss. Let's hope for a near miss. Or maybe an act of heroism. There's a few of them. Let's see what have we got for ourselves. The Dundee Courier for the 4th of January 1904. Okay. <sighs> we just don't get what we wish for here. Okay, so ex-guardsman shoots his sweetheart. A terrible tragedy has occurred at Kidderminster by train when the young man drew a six-chambered revolver and twice shot his sweetheart in the head, afterwards blowing out his own brains. The woman was not fatally wounded, but was unconscious when the train reached Kidderminster. The man was quite dead, and the woman declares their relations were most cordial, and not a crossword had passed between them. The man was formerly in the Coldstream Guards. And that's an article from the Dundee Courier for the 4th of January, 1904. She got shot twice in the head and survived. Wow. And I assume he only shot himself the once and succumbed. It seems strange that there doesn't appear to have been a reason for it. There was no motive that they'd not even argued. That's crazy, but I'm glad that she survived. Um, and getting murdered for no reason is, um, I mean, really, he's committed suicide for reasons only known to himself. I assume because he didn't want to end up in jail for shooting his his girlfriend, but yeah, good for her. I don't know, she's had a narrow escape there, apparently. Now we'll have another one. This will probably finish us off for this one. The Aberdeen Press and Journal for the 17th of June, 1905. Let's see what this one is. Well, we have another accident. Um, accident to a Bishop Mill painter. Hand sawn off. An apprentice painter named John Mackenzie, residing at 23 East Brock Street, Bishop Mill, was seriously injured yesterday in the workshop of Messrs Mackey and Mackenzie Carpenters, Hill Street, Elgin. It appears that the lad was larking with another employee, and while in the act of throwing a handful of sawdust, his right arm came in contact with a circular saw revolving at a high speed, with the result that the hand was completely severed at the wrist. Mackenzie was removed to Gray's Hospital and had the injured arm dressed. 
That's from the Aberdeen Press and Journal for the 17th of June, 1905. Obviously, this is an example of where health and safety um, hasn't been implemented. Uh, that anyone can come into contact with a circular saw while larking about, or are able to lark about in the vicinity of a circular saw in, in action. Um, yeah, I think he should have probably had more sense than that. Um, he certainly was punished for it. Uh, it doesn't tell whether it's his used hand or not. It says his right arm has come in contact. Um, I hope he was left-handed anyway, uh, and he wasn't too put out by that. But amputations, I mean, they were just the go-to. I mean, he's obviously done that himself. But if you were in an accident and you shattered your wrist or your ankle or... I mean, chances are they would have just chopped off your hand or your foot um, rather than try and heal the thing. Um, so... That sucks for that guy. It's also how we're going to finish this episode. So, let me see you for the next one.